Hello and welcome to Qatar 365, the show that offers a fresh outlook on Doha and the surrounding areas. I'm Miranda Atti and this episode is all about the farming industry, from outdoor markets to honeybees. Coming up, we visit the organic or natural Torba store and farm, find out the most efficient way to cultivate crops and meet the bees providing the country with sweet nectar. 58 kilometers out of Doha, you'll meet one of Qatar's main agricultural pioneers. For seven decades, Agrico has been supplying the freshest produce to more than 1,000 outlets. And its innovative approach also benefits emerging farmers, as Scheherazade Gafour discovered. Taking the future of farming to a whole new level, Agrico has addressed climate challenges by learning from experts worldwide while demonstrating local solutions. We have a very difficult environment to, to grow the you know, fruit and vegetable. We have eight month summer. We have only four month uh, spring. We don't have really winter, you know, by, by the way. So our season is very, very short. Therefore, to the food security, you should produce all around the year. That's why we, we concentrate on developing smart farming. Al Khalaf encourages businesses in the region to shift their focus to food security and sustainability. It is important to convert our uh, traditional farming to the smart farming. And this is the only way where we can produce and have our self-sufficient production to fulfill the demand for, for the country. We are trying our best to educate the, the, the young generation of how they have to have a self-sufficient of food security. And this is very important for the, for the country. This is one of the seasonal greenhouses we have. We use different uh, greenhouses for different crops. We put our forces to uh, uh, develop more farms to increase awareness in the agriculture in Qatar and to increase the production. Since the technology is considered quite high-tech for the market and the sector, we uh, stand step-by-step uh, step with the farmer. We operate for them or we make training for them for a period of time and then we transit the farm back to them. Agrico can produce various crops all year round using cutting-edge agricultural technology. When aquaculture meets hydroponics, you get what is known as aquaponics. Bacteria helps break down the excretions from the fish in these tanks. This is then used to fertilize these plants, which take up extra nitrogen, putting purified water back into the tanks. And now, for the very first time, this concept is in a grocery store in Qatar to implement vertical farming with LED lighting. Carrefour. It's a good point to educate the public about uh, this way of farming. See, if you allow me to take one plant and show you, um, it's, the roots is very clean and they are of different sizes. Um, I'll show you the other one here. Um, you can see the plants are very healthy. They have uh, uh, healthy um, green vegetables, healthy roots, full of uh, beneficial bacteria, the traditional uh, farming, if we compare, is lower production compared to this kind of uh, technology. We harvest only what, what the consumer likes to see in the, in the fridge behind this station here. So we really fill on demand, if you like. So the plants stay alive and healthy in the station until it gets harvested. The water is actually, for the fish, is just um, an environment to live in. They are not really using the water. It's not like the plant. The plant's absorbing the water, yeah? So um, in, in, in an arid country like Qatar, we have to think this way. How to cut off uh, the, the, the high utilization of the water. The technology is capable of growing leafy plants, including herbs, but also fruit like melons and tomatoes. 
and so crops continue to be harvested as this family does its utmost with on-farm resources and natural biological solutions to establish food security and ensure domestic production in a harsh climate. With its organic natural produce, Torba Store is a haven for the health conscious. And it's also part of Torba Farm's overall ethos of farm to table produce that includes two farmers markets. Fatima Al Kata, who brought the concept to life, tells me more about the benefits of sustainable living. From our farm, we have uh, dairy, raw milk that are not processed or heated. We're big fans of the microbiome, so we've got fermented foods ranging from kombucha to sauerkraut, and they really do help in sort of fulfilling that sort of holistic lifestyle that we kind of sort of try to educate people about. Why is organic produce so important, and how is it gaining popularity here in Qatar? Organic food is just not important only for us, but it's also for the importance of preserving generations after us, giving the important nutrients that are only found in organic food. So, and as well as it calls us for, to ask us questions about where our food comes from. How did you start Torba Farmers Market? We wanted to create something that was community-based, and was, there was a sort of stigma behind just sitting behind the counter, talking to people, whether you're an artisan or a barista or a person who sells uh, foods and vegetables. So what we said is that we wanted to create that and we wanted to connect people with food and connect the food to nature and where sort of that cycle comes. And how do you think the farmer's market has become a platform for small businesses as well as for the top store? It's sort of like a feasibility test for, for businesses, and we were there to help them. I think this is why a lot of uh, entrepreneurs feel that we're, they're grateful, and we are grateful too for them, because they gave us sort of like the opportunity to enable them and expose uh, visitors to the different kinds of tastes and cuisines. And what is the future for Torba Farms, Torba Store, and of course Torba's Farmers Markets? I'll tell you what's next. We ha we're opening the farm and we're gearing up officially to have it uh, in November, right before the World Cup. And if the store was something and the market was something, the farm's going to be completely something else. It's going to be uh, a whimsical farm, family-oriented experience that is so much fun and that focuses on permaculture principles and hopefully we'll have a sustainability program for kids and adults alike. Qatar is well on the way to meeting its ambitious food self-sufficiency targets for 2023. With this in mind, honey production has been increasing over the past few years and local bees and their honey, beeswax and propolis are now more popular than ever. There are thousands of bees here at Amgarn Farm. Beekeeper Arafat Hussein has been working with honeybees since he was a boy. I may be one of the first people to produce pollen in Qatar, royal jelly, propolis and products. Bees teach you work, they teach you sacrifice and they teach you sincerity in your work. Bees are beautiful insects and my love for them is great. He's showing me what's known as a cell. Each one contains hundreds of worker bees and one queen. Local farms all across Qatar have recently ramped up their production of honey. We began to gradually increase the number of cells. Currently, we aspire to produce two tonnes of honey annually. Part of the culture here is uh, to always consume natural uh, produced honey. And, uh, you know, the awareness of processed food or the organic or the natural uh, food is really increasing. So we wanted to fulfill this uh, demand uh, for the people. Uh, that's why we, uh, we're working with uh, Engineer Arafat. He's, he's amazing. He's really passionate about his work. 
And part of that passion involves teaching future generations. How do we educate people so they can raise bees and produce their own food at home, whether it's in their garden, at their house or farm? And of course, one of the best parts of beekeeping has to be the honey. That's good. Wow, that's amazing. And that's all natural. Yes, original. All from the bees that we saw earlier. Yes, Tastes so sweet and rich and thick. Also popular is propolis, pollen and the Queen's royal jelly, which is full of nutrients and antioxidants. Wow, so and <laughs> that's very strong, yes. but really good for you. As elsewhere, bees are vulnerable to pesticides and natural predators, as well as climate extremes. But in their role as pollinators, they are responsible for one third of the world's food production. We rely on our bees not to produce honey, but also, as you know, we are, uh, we are using them for pollinization uh, in certain crops, like, for example, tomato, and the sweet melon as well. Globally, bees are on the decline, but here in Qatar, a real effort is being made to focus on beekeeping, pollination, and of course, the golden nectar. We've tasted sweet honey, found out what hydroponics really means, and visited the country's first farmer's market. But that's all we've got time for on this episode. If you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag, Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out Euronews.com for more. And join us again next time on Qatar365.